Look, I can see why somebody doesn't necessarily see wellness as a business strategy because the directives they get from leadership and from their boards are measures such as revenue, margins, productivity, efficiency, real tangible things where wellness initially doesn't look like it's that tangible. But I know when we go into organizations and we're providing consultancy that takes an organization through leadership and cultural change, when we're doing that, we're not looking to add any fluff to that organization. What we're looking to do is to increase revenues, to increase profit margins, to, to increase productivity, to, to increase efficiency. We're looking to get tangible results in those things. Now, if we wanna get quick wins, often what leadership will do is that they will look to cut some costs somewhere. And it's like the story of the goose that laid the golden egg and they said, oh, we need more golden eggs, let's, let's cut the goose open. Well, that's stupid. Well, companies do that. They start to cut costs in areas that actually support their people. We know when we go in, if we want an easy win, we don't need to cut the costs. What we need to do is make sure that the people are at their best because if people are taking sick days, then they're not being productive. If they're at work and they don't have a kick in their step, if they're dragging their butt around, then they're not being productive. So all we need to do is start to look at what can we do to increase how the people feel about work, then they will work better and they'll turn up to work. Not only that, how many times you've been in a function where a friend has turned up from a new job and they're like, oh, this new place I'm working, it's fantastic. They've done this staff training for us and, and the guys are really talking about some stuff. We've never had, never had that kind of communication in the last place. And what you've got there is free branding. See, your people liberate your organization. So wellness, doesn't need to be the initial metric. There are ways to measure that, and, and any of the guys at, at, at um, Workplace Incentives can take you through a lot of that stuff. But what we've got to be aware of is that, that the wellness fuels the other metrics. Like, you know, you can't even dispute it. It's very tangible. And especially if you look at a 12 month period or 18 month period, that's when you really get to see the results because you're not going to change the mood of a place overnight. So I really encourage people to, to start to think of wellness as being a business strategy. If your people aren't well, your business is not well. And although it's a oh, new age, is not really what word, it's more like it's a, it's a way of thinking and leading for a new era. That's what it really is. It, it is a, it's a it's a new way to lead organisations because people don't have the same sort of work ethic. They're not going to be stupid anymore. They're going to turn up only if they feel like it. The old days of hard days work for hard days pay. They're done. And so we've got to make work a really attractive and enjoyable option.